Hello, I'm Lindsay Weirich, and today I'm going to show you how to make these beautiful bookmarks with a variety of techniques using your Derwent Inktense pencils. I'll be using the set of 12 for today's project. I'm going to start by sketching on a few flowers onto a piece of watercolor paper that I have divided up with masking tape. Feel free to draw any sort of flower, leaves, or weeds that could fit inside a bookmark shape. Be creative and have a good time with this drawing. The only thing that you need to keep in mind is that you want to draw with something that's not going to dissolve in water. I'm using a Derwin Inktense Outliner Pencil, which is a non-water-soluble graphite-like pencil, but you can use any pencil that won't dissolve in water that you have on hand. The Derwin Outliner Pencil can be purchased separately and is not included in the set of 12. Draw a variety of different flowers. I think that poppies are a good choice, rosebuds, um, daffodils, carnations, anything that's on a long stem like any bulb sort of flower will work really well. Ferns would be really nice if you wanted to do a leaf. Just think of something that will fill up that long rectangular space well. The nice thing about using ink tense pencils for this project is that once you've set the ink with water, it's not going to smudge, even if it's touched with wet hands. So you don't have to worry about any of that uh, media transferring onto books when you use it as a bookmark. I used one 6 inch by 9 inch sheet of watercolor paper divided into three portions with 1 inch wide masking kit tape to make my bookmarks. You can also use watercolor paper scraps for this, so be creative. You don't have to break the bank. Let's try some background wash techniques. For the first one, we're going to wet our background every bit except for the rosebud, and we are going to apply some ink tense pencil, but not directly from the pencil. We're going to use the masking tape as a palette of sorts, and we're going to scribble on some blue, green, and yellow onto the masking tape. That's going to remove enough lead from the ink tense pencils that we can have a good wash of color to work from. Using a wet brush, we're going to activate the ink tense pigments, and then we're going to apply it to the paper, starting with the blue at the top. Now, since I didn't wet the rosebud and the sepals and hip of the flower, those are going to remain crisp and white, and then the leaves and stem will get all kind of um, a nice wash of color over them. I'm going to work down into the green next and add that below the blue, and then add in the lighter greens and yellow at the bottom. That's going to give us an interesting background to start off with. While the paper is very wet, we're going to add some salt into that wash. Simply sprinkle a little over the top of the wet wash and you'll see these bursts of white happen as it dries. It reminds me of how baby's breath looks whenever you have a rose bouquet and I think it's a really nice touch for this bookmark. Just be patient and don't touch the paper until it's completely dry. Working on multiple projects gives your first project a chance to dry while you're working on others. I started off by coloring this bookmark with a yellow Inktense pencil using the edge of the pencil so I didn't get really hard lines. You don't want to use a lot of pressure here either. Then I went around the edges of my bookmark with a turquoise green color and that's going to give us a pretty vignette. Again, remember to use little pressure when you're coloring here so you won't have hard to dissolve lines later. I'm going right over the stems because I know that there'll be no problem whatsoever painting over those with green. Just liquefy the pigment that you've put down and that's going to give you a really lovely wash. Now to add a little extra texture to this wash, we're going to do a trick that I really enjoy doing, and that's taking the Inktense pencil and a wet brush and flicking a wet brush over the tip of the Inktense pencil and you get a beautiful speckled effect. For this next technique, we are going to wet everything except for the flower here on this carnation. So we're not going to wet the flower or the stem this time, just with clear water. Then, taking a fuchsia pencil, I am going to use a wet brush and pick up the color directly from the tip and apply it onto the paper. So it's kind of like how we did our spattering technique, except we're using the tip of the pencil kind of like you would a pan of watercolor paint. I decided I wanted more of a violet tone in the background, and since I didn't have a purple pencil, I went with my blue, and I'm picking up some of that directly from the tip and mixing it with my fuchsia to create more of a lavender tone. Another thing we can do is mix color on the masking tape using it as a palette again, but this time we're picking up the liquid paint from the tip and mixing it right there on the masking tape. I like to do that rather than scribble on the tape if the tips of the pencil are wet just to save on damaging the tips. Now I'm planning on a yellow carnation so I know having a purple background, which is a complementary color, will look fantastic. 
We are going to use another kitchen staple for this next technique. First, you need a pile of ink. So scribble your pencil on the masking tape and make a nice juicy pile of ink. I like to mix red and pink together to get a really beautiful poppy color. Make sure you have a lot of water there because you need the water for this technique to work. And then just loosely fill in your flower area. Now I'm gonna warn you, this is gonna get a little bit messy and just go with it. Don't worry if your paint ends up going outside of the lines. What you're going to do now is take a small piece of plastic wrap, or it could be even a piece out of a plastic bag, and you're going to press that down on top of your uh, your wet paint and you're going to scrunch it up and that's going to make some crepey lines in your design Then simply set something on it such as an eraser to weight it down and you've got to let it dry and this is going to take a while So be patient. This could take anywhere from an hour to overnight So just set it and forget it and I have another technique that involves a kitchen item, this time a straw. We're going to make another big pile of ink by scribbling a bunch of green ink this time at the bottom of our paper. And we're going to liquefy that with water and make some really juicy ink. Then simply use a straw to blow up, I'm thinking blades of grasses from that pile of ink that you made. It's random and it looks really cool. This next technique is one of my favorites. First, we're going to go in with our pencil on dry paper and we're just gonna lay down a coat of yellow. Next, using a wet brush, we are going to go in and just liquefy all of that dry pigment and make sure that you put down a good amount of water and make sure you get that color pushed all the way out to the edges of your flower. Then take a nice sharp magenta or red pencil and you wanna go and draw in the little ruffly edges of your carnation. This gives you the look of those beautiful carnations that have the um, contrasted edges and you can really use whatever colors you want, but I find that yellow and fuchsia or yellow and red look especially nice together. Next, I applied some different shades of green to the stem and just liquefied it with a wet brush. Then you can layer on more color if you want to get a little more depth and just finish it off in the same fashion. Keep in mind, you can always use the palette blending technique anytime you feel like you want more color or you want to slightly nudge different colors together. When you're working with a small number of pencils, such as a 12 set, you want to mix those colors together to get an infinite variety of tones and nuanced effects. So that masking tape, man, it makes the best palette for scribbling out those pencils and then mixing and adding them to your flowers. I decided to brighten up the head of the carnation in this fashion too, and it's just a great way to get more from less. Now let's move on to the rosebud bookmark. I really love this one. Rosebuds are fun because they're easy to draw and they fit in the uh, space really well. I'm just using a red pencil to add in my darker tones and then I'll just blend that out with a wet brush. I love how the background turned out in this. The salt gave a beautiful baby's breath, almost like texture in the background and it was so easy to do. So I hope you give that technique a try. For the leaves, we're simply just going to base in several shades of green. Enjoy this process. Just fill in those colors. You can use a sharp dark green pencil to draw in the veins on the leaves if you want. And one thing I really love to do is to take a sharp red watercolor pencil and just trace the serrated edges of the leaves because I feel like that really gives it that beautiful rose leaf look. And uh, that's pretty much all there is to that bookmark. This next technique is fun because you never know what you're gonna get when you remove the saran wrap. Now you wanna make sure you let that saran wrap dry completely before you take off the uh, weight. And then I went through and I erased my pencil lines because I realized that I would want to make my petals to kind of correspond to where the ink went with my saran wrap. And after redrawing some of the pen petals with my Inktense pencil, I drew on some crepey shadows and then liquefied it with water using a watercolor brush. Then I went and uh, scribbled some paint onto my masking tape again and picked that up and used that to intensify some of the areas in my poppy. I love that you get just a really spontaneous look when you try this technique. I filled in the stems just like I did before on the carnation and liquefied that. I felt it needed a little more definition, so I'm using a waterproof pen to go through and draw some fine lines. You can use a line maker or whatever black pen you have. And I decided to do the line work on the other parts of the drawing as well because I figured if I did the flower, it would be good for the stems to have the lines on them too. And then for a final bit of pop, I'm using a white chromoflow pencil to add some highlights. I really love this technique. This is a wonderful mixed media technique that I feel really makes your watercolor 
and your ink tents look fantastic. This step is optional, but I wanted to add a little rubber stamping to mine because I have the stamps on hand. It's another hobby I enjoy. And then you want to make sure everything is completely dry before you remove the tape. Now I love nice wide borders here because that's gonna give me the option to use decorative edge scissors to cut down my edges. I can always trim them more if I want to, or I could even punch a hole in the border if I didn't wanna punch a hole on the, um, the painting area itself to add tassels or strings or ribbons or something like that. For my bookmark. Of course, that's all optional and uh, you can finish them however you prefer. I want to thank you so much for doing this project with me today. I had a ball creating with you and hope you try some of these techniques in your next work of art. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting!